Many people have heard Bible stories, but few know the story of the Bible. It's often noted that the Bible is a collection of 66 books of multiple genres written by 40 authors over 1,500 years in three languages telling one great story. The Bible is not a story in the fictional sense. It is the history of God and his plan and purpose for humanity. And all history is his story. Perhaps the best way to explain the unified story of the Bible is through six milestones in biblical history. Six words, creation, condemnation, anticipation, salvation, evangelization, and exaltation. Let me explain what I mean by that. Creation. In the beginning, God created everything. And as the eternal, all-powerful Lord of all, he spoke the world into existence. Every plant, cell, atom, and living thing in all of the universe is his design. And on the sixth day of creation, God created man in his image and likeness to exercise dominion over the earth. The Lord put Adam in the Garden of Eden, and because it was not good that the man should be alone, God created his wife Eve to be a helper fit for him. And God told them they could eat from every tree in the garden except for one, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And as long as Adam and Eve obeyed the Lord's commands, they lived in perfect peace with God in the garden. Condemnation. One fateful day, Adam and Eve gave in to the serpent's temptation to eat the forbidden fruit, and they received condemnation for their sins. In that moment, everything changed. Sin, which is rebellion against God, shattered the world. When God asked Adam and Eve about it, they tried to shift the blame, but it was too late. They had broken the Lord's commands and would suffer the consequences. No longer could they live in perfect peace with God in the Garden of Eden. No longer would they live forever. Death and sin were now a tragic reality for Adam and Eve and all of their descendants. All people would now die. All people would now be born into the sin that is inherited from their father, Adam. And we see the curse of sin immediately in Adam and Eve's shame, their guilt, their deception. And soon after, as their son, Cain, murders his own brother, Abel. Humanity had fallen from the light of God's grace and plunged headlong into darkness. And we're all now born enemies of God, continually rebelling against our Creator in our attitudes and in our actions. And we're going to ultimately face His righteous judgment upon our death. Now, that's the bad news. Anticipation. Well, praise God. There is also good news. God is not only righteous and just, but He's also loving and merciful. God had a plan from the very beginning to redeem humanity. And we see a glimpse of God's grace immediately after the curse of sin when he clothes Adam and Eve in animal skins. This is one of many examples foreshadowing God's ultimate plan that one day the death of one might cover the sins of many. We also see the first glimpse of this promise of God when he promises that the woman's male offspring would one day crush the serpent's head as the serpent would only strike the son's heel. This is the first hint of God's covenant promise to redeem humanity. And later, as we, the entire world has fallen into great sin, God decides to wipe out all the people and start over through Noah, the one righteous man that God found on earth, and his family. After God spared Noah and his family from the flood, he made a covenant promise with Noah that he would never again destroy every living creature in the same way. And later, God would bring his plan into greater focus with the covenant promise he makes with Abraham, that he will make him into a great nation, that in him all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And this promise continued through Abraham's son Isaac and Isaac's son Jacob. And one day, through their descendants, the promised son would be born who would crush the serpent's head and redeem humanity from the curse of sin. The rest of the Old Testament is just generations of anticipation for God's covenant promises to be fulfilled. And God further helps us see his plan when he rescues the nation of Israel from slavery in Egypt and he brings them into the promised land. His holiness and our depravity, it comes into better understanding when God gives us the law and he hands it, the law down to Moses. And no matter how hard people try to keep the laws, because of the sin that's in their hearts, they continually miss the mark. 
And however, we see how the sacrifice of animals for the forgiveness of sins foreshadows an even greater sacrifice that God would provide once and for all. And when God established David as the great king of Israel and he makes a covenant promise that the reign of one of his descendants would never end, we again catch a better understanding that the promised son of Eve would be a descendant of David and his kingdom would reign forever. However, time and again, people sin, they reject God and they receive the consequences that they deserve. And eventually they come to their senses, they repent and God rescues them. And this cyclical history of Israel continues until the coming of the promised king, salvation. The prophesied birth of Jesus changed everything. It began the fulfillment of God's covenant promise that had been anticipated since Eden. Jesus' name even means the Lord is salvation. He is the sinless Son of God who has eternally existed as the second person of the Trinity. He was with God in the very beginning of all creation. Jesus left heaven and was born of a virgin, Mary. And he is the new Adam, born without sin and without sin's curse. And he lived a perfect life, taught great things about God and his kingdom. And ultimately, he laid down his life on that cross as a substitutionary atonement for our sins, once and for all. For all the sins of all who would ever repent and believe in him. And Jesus conquered sin. He conquered death by rising again from that grave three days later. And then he ascended to sit on the throne at the right hand of God in heaven where he's going to rule until the day that he returns. The serpent has been defeated. The kingdom of God under the rule of Christ is now here. Where before people could only know God's plan in part, now we can see his redemptive plan unfolding through Christ. Everything written about Jesus in the Old Testament, it's been fulfilled. It was a brilliant work from the beginning that has been progressively revealed throughout history. And the plan continues today, evangelization. Today, we live in the church age at a time of evangelization to the world. After the death and the resurrection of Jesus, he commissioned all of his disciples with the great commission to make disciples of all nations. Jesus then sent the Holy Spirit to indwell and empower believers to spread the gospel, the good news of salvation through Christ to all who would repent and believe. In over hundreds of years against all odds and severe persecution, Christianity spread rapidly across the world. And today we continue that mission of following Jesus and making disciples according to scripture until we either die or Christ returns. We live in a new era of anticipation for our ultimate reward in heaven and the fulfillment of Jesus' promise to come again. Exaltation. One day, Christ will fulfill his promise to return. And when he comes, he will come to judge the living and the dead. He's going to open the Lamb's book of life with the names written of all who have ever trusted in Christ for the forgiveness of their sins. And everyone's name who is not written in the book will be cast into eternal condemnation. But all whose name is written in the book will be welcomed into the reward of eternal life with our Lord and Savior in the new heavens and the new earth where the curse of sin will be no more. There will be no more pain, no more suffering, no more sickness or death. And to that, we echo the anticipation of Revelation 22:20. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. So that's the Bible in six words. There's creation, condemnation, anticipation, salvation, evangelization, exaltation.